Mikko, and this is the last color. I'm pretty excited about doing this video, but I have to say that it caused me quite a lot of pressure to get this idea done. I felt like because it's the last color of this bright black series of different colors that I need to do something epic and memorable for it. But of course that is the complete wrong way to think about creativity at all and I needed to kind of scrap the idea that I was doing. And I want to be very clear about this because I don't want there to be any confusion. I'm going to finish that painting that I started but I'm going to do it without this color restriction. But for this I felt like I need to start over and do something that I feel comfortable doing. When I was sketching different coloring ideas I suddenly stumbled upon this idea of a flower shop where the owner has died and the flowers have died also but in this afterlife the flowers have their own like spirit form and these spirit form flowers are wild and they are kind of growing in unpredictable colors and they are a bit more unmanageable than normal flowers are when they are alive. They are glowing in the dark. So I thought that this is an idea that I can truly get excited about. And I remember when I was walking home and this idea came to me and I was having actively this conversation with my creativity. That like, can I do glowing flowers? And creativity was just like yes to all of these things. And I remember that I got so excited like a little kid and I brought in all of the things that I love about drawing and illustration and then I thought that like, can I do a like, funny cat in the picture? Can I have an apron in the picture? And if you're new to this channel, I love drawing aprons for some weird reason. So the answer to all of these questions was yes and I was just like exploding with excitement because I was so excited to do all of these fun elements that I just truly love into one single image. and. I I was so excited about this story of this flower shop owner who has stayed working in this place because I thought that the flower shop owner has loved gardening his whole life. So where else would he want to go in afterlife? There's nothing better than working on something that you love. It's just like I love painting more than anything. If I had a choice, I would keep painting <laughs> in my death also. So I, I just love this idea and I thought it's a perfect way to end the rainbow. Not with something epic, but with something very quiet. So you probably noticed that I'm doing line art in this illustration. And when I'm sketching the first part of this illustration, I'm not concerned at all about the quality of my line art in that phase. One artist once said to me that a good illustration should look finished in every part of the illustration phase. And I just thought that this is such garbage advice. And I hope that nobody takes that sort of stuff seriously because it's so bad advice. Because honestly, if I thought about painting and illustration that way, I would never get anything done because my sketching lines they definitely don't look like a finished illustration at all. And if I let that stop me from creating anything, I would just not create any art. So like, I don't agree with that at all. Like you do what you like, but for me, that line of thinking is just like complete garbage. So when I'm sketching, I'm putting down all of the ideas and things that I want to be in the image. And I need to physically see if they just fit into the canvas at all. I try to do this idea process as fast as possible because when you keep your lines very loose nothing becomes too precious and you can just like delete out elements or move characters from one side to another without just crumbling the entire construction of the composition. So this process I try to keep very fast and when I do a cleaner version of this sketch I do a separate layer and on that layer I take a new brush that is this my inking brush. This brush is called Chunky Line Art and it's from my own brush set. But if you want to do a similar brush and you don't like to have this sort of like character to it, because this Chunky Line Art brush, it's not perfectly smooth. There's a little bit of texture in the brush stroke because I like to have that little bit of character in my brushes. But if you want to do perfectly clean brushes, there is already a monoline brush in Procreate that is quite close to this. Or you can just experiment with streamline settings 
in your brush studio to achieve the same effect without buying my brushes. So this brush I like because it kind of like works with my hand because I have extremely shaky line. My hands just shake a lot and the streamline setting just makes it possible for me to do this sort of like smooth and clean lines. But there are other factors to it as well. Zooming out and zooming in is important. Usually when you zoom out it's easier to do a long sweeping clean line than if you have just way too zoomed in view of your drawing at all times. If you have your drawing super zoomed in, you need to do like longer movements with your fingers, and the longer the movement is, the harder it is to control to be that smooth. And also, I rotate the canvas all the time. When there is, for example, an arc, I'm very aware of the fact that I'm very right-handed. For me, for example, if you think about a C letter that is kind of tilted forward. That is really easy arc for my hand to do. But if you think about, for example, the top right corner, like that sort of like arc that is going the opposite way, I need to rotate the entire canvas to do that line smoothly. And I always go through the trouble of rotating the canvas. So that's why you see me rotating the canvas constantly. It's just to optimize the way that my own hand works to create these sort of like smoother lines. Smoothing in this brush settings, it helps, but sometimes it's just not enough because I also need to have low enough streamline to have more control over the line itself. So this chunky line art brush I created because I love this sort of like aesthetic that reminds me of like a pencil holder cases from the 90s and they are probably the type of pencil holder cases that have this sort of like really pretty illustrations that when I was a kid in school that I would have been a bit like too embarrassed to ask for from my parents that they are a bit girly. I don't know a better word to describe it, but that doesn't mean that I didn't want to have one. So that's basically the whole style. And now that I'm older and I can do whatever I want, I can do this as an illustration for myself and this is just one part that like makes me really love this stuff so much because I feel like with my art I can kind of slowly be more and more myself and this has been like a long process but now that I'm like almost there I guess it's just so enjoyable and I can't say that art has been like this for me forever there has been some troubles but I'll get to that later Anyway, when I'm doing this whole illustration, it's just like a whole party for my head. And I remember that I accidentally said a few times to my boyfriend when I was drawing this that I need to go and spend time in my flower shop. And he said, like, do you mean like you need to go and draw your thing? And what I thought in my head is like, what's the difference? I'm in my flower shop. <laughs> Doing the illustration is the same thing. I'm spending time in this scene and that's fun for me. So I want to be very clear about this line art that it's on a separate layer. This is not a white layer that I'm using as a multiply layer. It's a separate layer, so all of these lines are built on a layer that has 100% transparency everywhere else where there are no lines. This is very important for later and I'm gonna get back to this later in the coloring phase. So I just wanna be clear if anybody wants to try a style that is like this, that this is going to be necessary for later on. When I'm doing this line art in a cleaner way, I have already taken into account in the sketching phase what elements are important for me to sketch really precisely. Like for example, all of the perspective stuff, like for example the shape of the shop and that garbage bin, those things I need to sketch with a lot more precision than others. So areas where I'm confident with my drawing skills, I leave those out quite loose because I want this line art phase to be fun for me as well. So I leave a bit of design work for the line art phase as well. So I'm not just repeating the same lines, because that is just so boring for me that it's not fun to do. So if I can come up with like different flower shapes or different design elements to decorate the scene when I'm doing the cleaner version of the line art, 
I will leave those decisions and space for those decisions for that phase. Otherwise, I will just make the whole process so boring for me that it's not fun for me to paint. And I understand that some people go diligently over their line art in the exact same way in the inking phase, but it's, it's just not me. So this works for me better. For this text in this uh, billboard, Rainbow Flowers, I used the font that I used on this channel and I made a stroke for it in the font section. But as you see, I used that as a guide and then I drew over it with my hands because I wanted to have this little bit of like hand drawn aesthetic to the font so that it wouldn't stick out too much as something completely different. And same for all these geometric elements, that when they are not in perfect alignment, as long as they are within the perspective, I just let them be. Because I think that adds a bit of like warmth to the whole illustration. It's quite easy to use just quick shapes for everything and make perfect lines. But to me, it's not that interesting. I'm more drawn to kind of like the broken way that things look beautiful. And that applies to absolutely everything. When I'm plucking in the colors, at this phase, I'm aware that like these are not going to be the final colors. I'm just filling this out like a puzzle. The hard part about this puzzle is that wrong pieces fit and it's up to your own judgment to find the right pieces that fit in the right way. But to get that information, I need to have just a certain level of wrong colors in to have something to judge the colors against. At least I know that I'm going for this overall purple effect. So that gives me a bit more guidance. And I have added the biggest areas first, because if I started with the smallest details, it would be really hard to build on that in any significant way. So now that I have like the bigger areas filled in, I start adding more and more colors. But you see that I'm going back to the same areas and just changing them constantly. Because they are flat colors, then the hue that I choose for that plane really matters. So it's a process that I go over many times before I arrive at the final result. But the great thing about this brush and this painting method is that even though it might seem like it's frustrating to go back and fix the color of some plane that just doesn't fit with the surroundings anymore, it's quite quick to fix, really. Like, even if this has only few layers, because I didn't have enough layer <laughs> space to have a separate layer for each element, I kept the flowers on their own layer, most of the colors are on their own layer, and then for a few special effects, I kept a few extra layers so that I could test how all the glows would work in the end. Because the chunky line art brush that I'm using for the line art in this illustration is quite thick. At least I'm not using like a minimum size of it at any point. The flowers have the thinnest lines, but then again, they are the fastest to color. The thickness of these lines makes it really easy to go back and fix a color area that doesn't work because I can be quite um, imprecise with the filling of the color because I don't have to worry about the color going over the line on the other side of that area. So they are kind of like these pools that are very easy to fill. And when it's a closed area, I use the color filling option by dragging the color from the top right corner into that area and then just adjusting it by sliding the pencil to the right. When you do this, be very careful that you use the threshold option to make sure that you are filling the entire like pool of color that you want to fill so that you can avoid those like ugly looking fringes. If your threshold is too low, you will usually get this sort of like white fringe around the filling of the color. The reason why I said that the line art is on its own separate layer and I don't use it as a multiply layer but in a normal blend mode. The reason why I said this is that when I go to the layer and I press the layer itself and then I press alpha lock, that allows me to use this chunky line art that is quite wide as part of the coloring process. And that means that I color pick colors from the illustration itself and I color the lines as well because they are so thick that, especially in objects that are thin, like these flowers themselves, 
I used the line as part of the whole coloring of this illustration, just to add that little bit of extra oomph and detail, because otherwise the line art itself would like cover the object. I don't know if this makes sense. It's just an effect that I like, especially when I can kind of like shift the hue of the line art based on what area that line art is on. And then it becomes part of the illustration, not as something that is just a guideline for where the colors go. I guess one of my favorite things about this illustration is this cat that is hiding in this box. I think it's probably meant for flowers, but the cat is kind of like owning it as its own house. I'm pretty sure that this cat has something to do with the gardener's death. This might be just me, but I think all cats are here to murder us. So starting from this pink illustration, all of these different paintings that I have done are in the order of the original pride flag that used to have eight colors when it was first designed. And if you are wondering why pride matters, I think you should just check out this video, because I think that channel does much better job at explaining why it's relevant, if it's something that you care about. And I thought about it, and I came to the conclusion that I can't speak for everyone, but I need to speak for myself. And the reasons why I'm so excited about this illustration itself, I think speaks for why this is important for me. Unless you didn't already pick up on it, based on these previous videos, I don't go and explain it explicitly, but that pink painting wouldn't have happened if this sort of like growth and acceptance didn't happen in myself. And the fear that I speak about doing this sort of like colorful illustrations and thinking about what other people might think of me. I didn't say that in that video because I was a I guess a bit too afraid of saying it, but that is just internalized homophobia that I had to get over. And if I didn't get over that aspect, that illustration wouldn't have happened at all. Also in my previous color video, Blue, where I talk about that specific workplace meeting situation, about those flowers, if you didn't get it in that video, that is just the way that most workplace homophobia happens these days. It's not somebody calling you a slur word at work. It's not usually that explicit. It's these smaller microaggressions that are really hard to verbalize, especially not in my own language, to other people, how you are put into these situations, that you are treated as less than, and you are not part of like the decision process, or that people make certain hiring decisions, or people are put on different projects based on these sort of like subconscious decisions. And you can never really point out to like one specific reason that like this was homophobia or this was something else, but you are kind of like left on your own to wonder <laughs> what this was. And this is why the pay gap exists. So it matters, but I think the way that it affects me most of all is that being myself and doing the kind of art that I like to do, it's not that someone else could just like come and say that like, yeah, just be yourself and do the type of paintings that you want to do. That is like a whole process and I had to do a lot of work on myself to be at the phase where I can be happy doing these sort of illustrations and enjoy it but don't take it for granted. It didn't come easy for me and it has been years and years of work to get to this point. And this is why pride matters to me. And this is why it's so important to love yourself and accept yourself the way that you are so that you can enjoy life. I've always had a bit of a problem with this it gets better campaign, because in one way I love the way that it gives young people hope that are struggling, but at the same time the <laughs> kind of cranky old me likes to think that like it doesn't really get that much better, we are still fighting the same fights in all different areas of life, it's just that like you get so strong from walking uphill 
all the time that you get this sort of like super power that you can kind of like overcome any obstacle and that's why it gets better because you get stronger i don't know <laughs> if that's a less motivating message to hear but that's the way i think about it that you become a bit more immune to like hate speech and that stuff like for example having a youtube channel i get all kinds of comments all the time and they don't bother me that much i just immediately ban somebody who is just like not be able to behave like a human being here and it's not my problem i don't want to like deal with that and it's not my job to educate somebody else they have like some sort of hatred that they keep inside themselves i'm not gonna quit making youtube videos because these comments appear and just decide not to have them on this channel that's all and that's really all I want to say about that. It's not irrelevant. It's important to my art and the way that I make art and my whole process. And that's why it will probably be part of this channel every year when Pride happens in some form. I just didn't know that this project of doing these colors would take so long, but it has been a creatively challenging experience. Like for example, I'm not that confident at using purple, but when I'm forced to use purple as the main color, I think it's a fabulous like color challenge that stretches my creative expression to kind of like new areas and I just love it. <laughs> I think it's great to challenge yourself. That's not what I mean by like not doing stuff in your comfort zone. What I mean is that like you should be able to enjoy your art without feeling guilty about enjoying your art. The subject matters that you choose are the ones that you will give your all into making those illustrations the best that they can be. But if you purposefully try to make something that just feels like a chore, that you feel like, now I'm challenging myself, I'm going out of my comfort zone and I'm doing 100 horses, when you're not at all interested in drawing horses, that's probably not a great idea for your art or your mental health. So don't push yourself there. <laughs> I mean, there are ways that you can improve in your art by doing stuff that you love, because you will do them in different ways and that will always challenge you creatively and your techniques will inevitably improve just by making more art, because you're not going to be doing the same painting every time, probably, so you will get better at it, because you keep doing new things and new ways of expressing those things that you are excited about. In this part of the illustration, I was already kind of like experimenting a lot with the glows of these flowers and that's the reason why I kept all the colors so low in values so that I would have a bit of like wiggle room for those glows to be visible. But then I learned this thing about purple and this style that like when you just use cold colors like purple and blue and ultramarine blue in an illustration, it already kind of looks like the night time. So I don't need to have that drastic value shift between dark and light when I'm doing this style and using these colors. So that part was difficult because when I do paintings in different styles, you kind of have to let go of all the other stuff that you have learned in the other styles because they might not apply to a new style and you just have to let go of them and keep them in the fridge and take them out later when you need them for the other artists styles that you have in you but for this artist the line art is kind of like overriding the importance of values and that's why i brought the whole illustration to a much lighter level and i think it works just as well and it's easier to read and the line art is more visible this way so that was something that isn't intuitive based on like my other style like my more painterly style or the graphic illustration style because that is also quite high in contrast so for this those rules just don't apply the same way and i thought that this was really fun to learn in this process also something that always surprises me no matter how many times i go through this process is that when you have this sort of detailed line art and you add color to it you always kind of like end up losing half of the details that is something that i take into account when i start adding highlights and different shadows because they are another way of like depicting those objects and just preserving that same 
level of detail everywhere because I want to keep the interest level high in pretty much all areas of this illustration. It doesn't have like one main focal point except of course the ghost which is like huge white and glowing. And that is also the reason why I went back into the line art layer and I added like a whole lot more flowers because after colors it just didn't provide the same effect that I wanted. So line art is something that I can go back and forth. It doesn't have to be like one, two, three, <laughs> walk through of these different steps. If I don't have the areas where I want to have specific colors, I will go back into the line art layer and make it so. Line art is not something that is sacred to me, like it can be changed, it can be edited until the whole illustration is finished. And that's color purple. Thank you to everybody who has been part of making this the whole project happened by watching these videos and commenting on these videos. It's because of you subscribers that this channel like can grow. I just love the fact that I've been able to share these paintings and the process of painting them with you guys because it has also given me a chance to spend more time with these paintings and illustrations that I love. And for that I am very grateful, and you will see more of my paintings in this channel. I'm Mikko, I'll see you guys in the next video. Be kind to one another. Bye!